That's really good. Cheers. We got time on our side. We're in a state of hope. There's our soybeans soaking. Um, they obviously expanded quite a lot by being soaked. So we're gonna go ahead and get these guys rinsed off and then put into a blender. Good morning, friends. It's like 36 hours later and it's time to blend these soybeans and make the soy milk. So I have them over here soaking. I'll show you right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and drain these. I think rinse them. I have to look at the instructions. Let me look at the instructions and then I'll blend them. Soak, drain, blend. Cool, and then I strain it and then pour it into a pot, add water, boil, and cook for 20 minutes. Cool, so, um, and then I can add other ingredients. And the time that we share makes it Got this place. I did not peel all of the soybeans like the recipe instructed because it was just becoming way too time intensive and there's no way I'm going to be able to do that on multiple occasions if I want to keep making soy milk. So I decided let's give it a try with the skins on. So I blended it all up just um, after rinsing them and peeling probably about 25% of the skins off and blending them that way. been on my mind sick and tired of the nine to five in the city life hey darling we could get out of town see the beautiful world around wanna see it now Okay, so the soy has been extracted from the nut milk bag, and here I have about four and a half cups of soy milk. So now, because it's a legume, it's a bean, you have to cook it. It smells very weird, so I'm hoping that the smell goes away uh, once it's cooked. So I blended it with four cups of water to one cup of um, one cup of dry soybeans. So once they were soaked, it was like a one and a half cups. And I strained it using a nut milk bag that I got on Amazon. I got two reusable nut milk bags. I will link everything I'm using down in the description. Um, and now I'm gonna pour it into a pot or saucepan, bring it to a boil, stir, and skim the foam. Um, so I need to, once it's boiling, I'll cook it over medium heat for about 20 minutes and then I can let it cool. But in my case, I'm going to use it directly in a latte. So after this is cooked, then I can add the dates and a little bit of sea salt and vanilla extract for some flavor. <sighs> I'm actually curious if you can use the leftover pulp for anything because it almost has like a tofu like texture. So I'm gonna Google that real quick and see if there's any creative uses for that. So soy gets a really bad rap in the United States. And you know, if you think about what soy actually is, it's just a bean, it's just a legume. If you grow it in your garden and you see how it grows, it just grows like other plants. Like there's nothing inherently bad about the soybean. 
um, just like there's nothing inherently bad about wheat and growing wheat. What the problems are with soy and how it affects our bodies is because it's been grown in like a monoculture type industrial farming settings using GMO seed and then once it's been grown that way for so long, it just starts to affect our bodies the same way gluten affects a lot of people. But there's nothing inherently wrong with soy. So I grew soy in my garden and I was excited because it's heirloom seeds and I'm really excited to see how, how the soy milk tastes. It's super nutritious, it's really high in protein, um, it's got a lot of iron and other minerals in it and it's super simple, very simple ingredients. So the soy milk is just gonna be soybeans, water, and then whatever else I add to it. Um, and again, like I'm, I'm curious to see what I can use for this extra pulp. It smells weird, but um, maybe it won't taste weird. Let me do a quick search and see if I can find out any information on what I can do with it. Um, it says add to stir fries for added protein and delicious texture. Add to baked goods such as breads, muffins. I'm starting to boil. Let me um, skim the top real quick. Okay, so once it starts boiling, it starts like foaming up really fast. So you definitely have to keep an eye on it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong other than maybe need to turn the heat down a little bit. Just let it simmer kind of. I'm trying to find just the right temperature so it's cooking and boiling without having it boil over like it did. Okay, so let's see. It's called, okay, so it's called Okara. That's the extra soy soybean pulp. Um, it's a leftover solid once soy milk is passed through a nut milk bag. Many people don't know what to do with this residual pulp and it seems like a waste. It's perfectly edible, wonderfully nutritious, and very easy to include in your favorite recipes. Awesome. So I've got this cookbook right here called The Vegan Pantry by Miyoko Shinner. It's the person who created the company Miyoko Cheese, the vegan cheese. There's a lot of Okara here. Okay, so gold nuggets or buffalo wings. Um, they have a pound of tofu, a cup of water, two cups Okara, two cups vital wheat gluten. This is a good recipe for any leftover Okara for making soy milk. Actually, you know what? She has a soy milk recipe in here. I bet I followed it totally wrong. Let's see. Let's see what her soy milk recipe is. Okay, so silly me, I went online to look for a soy milk recipe when I have this book, The Vegan Pantry, and I know she definitely has a soy milk recipe. I've seen it before, and actually this cookbook is one of the reasons why I was like encouraged to try making, making it, so let me find it. This recipe is super simple. It's actually easier than the one I followed. So her recipe, you use dry soybeans, soybeans. you don't soak them. You cook them briefly in boiling water, and then you drain them, rinse them, or you just, you don't even rinse them, but I would, because these are just straight from our garden. Um, drain, rinse, then transfer into the blender from there. Oh, interesting. So the okara, the leftover okara, it adds like a flaky texture to foods. So it can add a texture to things like vegan fish or nuggets because it creates like a flakiness. So that's actually really cool. So I'm gonna have to make something this week. I'll make sure to share that with you guys using the Okara, which is all this stuff right here. I think I have about, it's actually really cool. It reminds me of chicken in the texture, in the appearance. So it actually makes perfect sense that it would be good to use in like a vegan chicken. Um, and you know, people really hate on vegan substitutes, but it's really just using things like tofu, which is a really natural product. Using things like okara, which is this pulp that I have left over from this process of making, making the soy milk. Super natural product. This is just remnants of soybeans. And then seasonings um, and also vital wheat gluten. And vital wheat gluten is essentially wheat flour that has been, the protein has been separated. And you can do this process even with just adding water to flour and it separates um, naturally. So vital wheat gluten is just removing the high protein part of wheat from the remaining part. So that's why you get a really high protein substitute. 
making DIY like vegan chicken nuggets at home is way more natural, has way less ingredients than you would get at the store and is, is good for you. You're just talking about things like beans and more beans and wheat and you put it all together and you get something that tastes really good. Totally not necessary though. If you're not into the, the vegan substitutes, then you can just use beans or lentils or any kinds of foods that have protein in them. Um, you don't have to, to make uh, vegan substitute, that's fine too. This this book, guys, is seriously really helpful if you're wanting to to make vegan foods from scratch, um, especially if you're wanting to grow things like soybean. There's so many recipes in this book. Some of them are kind of complicated, but um, it's great for things like what I'm doing right now. Okay, so this recipe actually says just boil it for five to 10 minutes, so I don't think I need to boil it 20 minutes like the other recipe said. I am definitely gonna follow this one in the future. I'll link this book in the description below. I've definitely linked it before and it is in my Amazon storefront. So you can find my Amazon storefront in the description. So I'm gonna go ahead and first I'm gonna taste it. I'm not so sure I'm gonna like it because I don't really drink soy milk unsweetened. Then I'm gonna add, uh, I think I'm gonna add maple syrup because that's from our farm, a little bit of salt and some vanilla extract. So let's get that going. Okay, so this is a moment of truth where I taste the soy milk. Oh, it's got all that like yuba on top that's developing. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. It actually doesn't taste bad. Honestly, it tastes a lot like a nut milk. It's not bad at all. So that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead, add vanilla, salt, and maple syrup to this, and blend, blend it up in the blender again. Actually, I don't need to blend it in a blender since maple syrup is already a liquid. I also make our own vanilla extract just by, um, using vodka and vanilla. Vanilla beans, which I got at Costco actually. Hmm, that's really good. It's creamy, it's a little sweet from the maple syrup. I think I could use a little bit more vanilla, so just add a tiny bit of So the truth is, the reason I'm making this this morning is because I really wanted to make myself a latte, but we have stopped buying plant milks from the store because I want to start making them myself. And soy milk is actually one of my favorite things to add to coffee, but I typically avoid buying soy milk from the store because of how soy is grown in the US. So I was really excited to make this myself so I can have my own soy milk added to my coffee. So this is kind of a cool moment because we grew the soybeans we made the maple syrup. I even made that vanilla extract myself. So this is like homemade, homegrown soy milk. And I don't think a lot of people can say that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add soy milk to my coffee and we're gonna see how it goes. I am gonna froth it for a little bit, just some of it, because I want the foam on my coffee. <laughs> and I'm gonna use my handheld frother, just called, it's called an Aero Latte. I'm gonna use the handheld frother to get this froth up. It's really good. It's got a little bit of a bitterness to it that 
I'll probably work to remove maybe with time, see if I can find ways to make it more smooth and creamy, but it's really good. I added a little bit more maple syrup for some sweetness. I'm very happy with this. Cheers. <laughs> Now I think I'm gonna try making cashew milk next because cashews are my favorite. See you guys next time. Bye friends.